Covered calls are legitimately one of the best trading strategies to actually make consistent money. But do you really want to be the loser who saves up $60,000 to buy Apple shares so he can make $700 a month in premium? That's the same guy who tells you he doesn't need to drink to have fun. Yeah, he's probably better off in the long term, but I don't have $60,000 or social skills. Poor man's covered calls in Old English are all I have. But maybe, just maybe, all I need. With a covered call, you're buying 100 shares of stock than selling a call against those 100 shares. This means that if you want to make a lot of premium, you need to own a huge amount of shares. And because I'd always recommend selling covered calls against blue chip stocks, it requires a lot of money that you don't have. I mean, we're talking about Robinhood traders here, right? I'm a Robinhood trader too, and if you're like me, those Wendy's paychecks aren't exactly covering 500 Amazon shares. So instead, what I'll do is buy an in-the-money call on the same stock with 3 to 12 months until expiration. In general, you want to look for a call that has around a 70 delta, or a 70% chance of being in the money at expiration. This call also functions like roughly 70 shares of stock. But what I can do now is sell a call against the call we just bought with 30 to 45 days until expiration and a 30 delta, meaning this call has a 30% chance of being in the money at expiration. Now I'm collecting the same premium I would be if I were holding 100 shares, but it cost me a fraction of the price. Obviously, this does come with extra risk. However, we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's look at a real example of how a covered call compares to a poor man's covered call in Robinhood. I like Apple. It's a great blue chip stock and it seems like stocks are about to go up for the next few months is if they do anything else. If I wanted to sell a covered call on Apple, I'd need to own 100 shares of Apple as collateral. And as you can see, I'm definitely too broke for this. Instead, what I can do is buy this October 15th, 115 call. It has roughly seven months until expiration, and it cost me a fraction of what 100 shares would cost me. It also has around a 65 delta, meaning it has roughly a 65% chance of being in the money at expiration. And it functions like roughly 65 shares of the underlying stock. Because I now control shares of the underlying stock, I can then sell a call against the call I just bought. For example, this April 9th, 128 call, where I can collect $375 in premium. Now I'm able to collect the same $375 premium with a fraction of the capital requirements of buying shares. Our long call also provides us with more leverage than if we were just holding shares, which can be a good thing or a very bad thing. Here are a few incredibly important things to keep in mind when using this strategy. Obviously, you're taking on more risk than if you were to just own shares. This risk manifests itself in a few different ways. The fact that your option has time until it expires gives it extrinsic value. In a practical sense, this means that the underlying will have to go up throughout the life of the option in order for you to break even on your long call. If we look here on optionprofitcalculator.com, we can see that our break-even share price increases as we get closer to expiration. Like any option play, you not only have to be right in your prediction, but you have to be right before a set date and right enough. This means more risk. It also means that the basis of this strategy should always be buying a call that will increase in value, not hunting high premium. Collecting premium is a way to provide downside protection and lower the cost basis of that long call. It's so incredibly important to make sure you buy into a good long call position and not just the one where you can collect the most premium. In fact, if you're doing this right, it should be the opposite. Here's why. I selected Apple for this example not only because I think it'll steadily increase over the next few months, but also because Apple's implied volatility is below its 252-day average. That means that we can anticipate Apple's IV will most likely increase back up to that average, increasing the value of our long call. But wait a second, doesn't relatively low IV mean the calls we sell will be cheap as well? Yes, but that's okay, because the calls we sell only serve as a hedge that protect the bigger part of our position, which is the call we buy. With every poor man's covered call position, make sure you're looking at it through the lens of whether or not you're buying a good, cheap call. It should be a call you'd want to buy even if you weren't planning to sell calls against it. I know I mention this in almost every video, but looking at implied volatility is so important when making any option play. And it's so incredibly simple, yet I know 90% of the retards on Wall Street bets don't do it. Then again, when you're buying options with one day until expiration, it's not that important. When considering any option play, look up Apple IV rank or Tesla IV rank, click on Market Chameleon and briefly look at the stock's relative level of 
implied volatility. As we can see for Apple, it's trading below its 252-day average IV. That means that Apple's IV will most likely increase back to its average, and our long call will increase in value. If we look back at our long Apple call, we can see that Theta decays our option remarkably slow, at a rate of just two cents per day. This is the graph of theta decay over the life of an option. You'll notice that the graph isn't linear. Theta decays your option slowly at first, and then more quickly as you get closer to expiration, with the most aggressive decay occurring when the option has around a month until expiration. This is another great reason to buy calls with months until expiration. The further out you buy your calls, the cheaper time becomes. Buying a month out versus a week out is an expensive difference. However, buying eight months out versus seven months out costs you significantly less per month. This is also why we like to sell 30 day till expiration calls to the degenerates on Wall Street bets. Theta decays their options the fastest. I mentioned earlier that you wanna buy your long-term call with around a 70 delta. This means the call has roughly a 70% chance of being in the money at expiration. Keep in mind that this is just a general rule and you can adjust your delta to meet your personal risk tolerance. A lower delta call is gonna be cheaper and more risky. A higher delta call is gonna be more expensive but less risky. That being said, buying a call with around a 70 delta is a great idea when you're first testing out this strategy. Let's talk about profit taking. This chart represents the lifespan of your short call, the call you sold. When you're selling calls, time is your enemy. More time until expiration means more time for Elon Musk to tweet that he's linked quantum mechanics with general relativity. This is not what you want to hear when you're selling calls. And I promise you it will happen. That's why it's good to visualize your short option like this. If your short call hits 50% profit before this point, it's best to close that position. Take your profit and sell another call. If you don't, there's more time left on the option relative to how much profit you can make. But what happens if I get assigned? If the option you sold is in the money at expiration, Robinhood will immediately cover your short call by exercising your long call. Keep this in mind if you really want to keep your long call position open. If it looks like your short call will be in the money at expiration, you may want to close out that short call position to protect your long call, and then open a new short call position. This is called rolling. Let's talk about rolling. And I'm not talking about the kind of rolling you do at Coachella. Two completely different things. The only similarity is that the middleman of the transaction looks like he smokes meth. Rolling is just closing one short call position and opening another with a different strike price or expiration date. You can roll up, roll down, roll out, or roll on molly. That last one is kind of the uh, nuclear option, so to say, but it will make you feel better about your position moving against you. Rolling up is just closing your short call and selling a new short call with a higher strike. Rolling down is closing your short call and selling a new short call with a lower strike. And rolling out is closing your short call and selling a new call that has a later expiration date. There's not a specific rule that dictates when you should roll your position, but this is the general idea. If you think your short call will be in the money at expiration and don't want to run the risk of assignment, close your short call position and open a new one at a higher strike. This would be an example of rolling up. If the stock is dropping and your short call position is nearly hit near max profit, you may want to close the position and sell another call closer to a 30 delta. This would be an example of rolling down. However, it's important to note that incurring a loss on the option you sold is not necessarily a bad thing. The only time it should happen is if the stock has increased significantly in value, meaning the long leg of your option has also increased significantly in value. However, keep in mind that if the underlying is blowing past your short call strike consistently, you're losing out on gains from your long call. Once again, the fastest way to make a lot of money is to hold a long call that increases in value. Steady upward growth in the underlying is going to mean big upward growth in your long call. The short call simply provides a hedge if the stock goes sideways or down. If you think Amazon's about to unveil a profitable asteroid mining operation, you're not going to want to sell a call against your long call. But because the majority of the time that's not the case, poor man's covered calls are such a good way to make consistent money. Another great thing about this strategy is that you can also bet that the stock will go down. I know, I know, just stay with me here for a second. With covered calls, you can only bet that the stock will increase in value because you're actually holding shares. However, you can sell poor man covered puts as well. This is good to know for when you need to inverse a position you read on Wall Street bets. Instead of buying a call, just buy a negative 70 delta put. 
then sell a negative 30 delta put against that put. This is all, of course, assuming you have any reason to believe a stock would go down, which you'd have to be legitimately disabled to believe at this point. Here are three different poor man's covered call trades I'd make right now at three different account levels. Uh, yeah, you're probably just gonna wanna buy a gun off the black market and go rob a gas station because you're legitimately too broke. With $1,000, I'd most likely buy this July 16th 8250 AMD call. AMD's trading at relatively low IV and the stock's been declining over the last month. You could then sell this April 1st 89 call and collect a nice 240 in premium. With a $10,000 account, I'd probably buy these August 20th 45 Corsair calls. I'd say this is a good play at any account level. IV's at a relative low, and this is actually a position I'm holding right now. You can then sell the April 16th 45 call. I can't imagine a scenario where Corsair will continue to sell off like it has been after beating earnings. But once again, every intuition I have is wrong, so you should probably inverse this. 